Good to be with you. It's Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, today I want to focus on a relatively common rhythm disturbance of the heart known as supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. Let's find out all about it. Now, supraventricular tachycardia is a relatively common condition that is seen that causes the heart to race very fast. Now, it may produce many symptoms, and of course, one of the more common ones that we refer to are palpitations, that essentially means a sensation of the heart beating. Well, in this case, it beats very fast, and you might feel that the heart is racing, and often what distinguishes this from other types of rhythm disturbances is that the heart often beats very regularly. And it does go quite fast when you're having an attack of this 150, 160 beats per minute. So it is diagnosed by your doctor and they will tell you whether you have this condition or not because we don't want to confuse it with other types of rhythm disturbances. But if you have been told that you have SVT, well, again, it's a condition whereby there is an additional little circuit I like to tell my patients that is firing off and making the heart beat very fast. Now, let's look at the normal conduction of our heart and how does our heart beat, say, at 60, 70, 80 times per minute? Well, we can see here that I like to simplify things and tell my patients that the heart has its own pacemaker, the power station called the sinus node, and electricity travels from the sinus node down through some cables through the atria to a substation of you know, a collection of little fibers called the AV node. And then from the AV node, conduction then travels through a series of cables, both on the left side of the heart and the right side of the heart, to cause the ventricle or the bottom chambers to contract. So essentially the top parts of the heart, the atria, contract, producing the boom, and then you've got the bottom part of the heart contracting, causing the ventricles to contract, boom. Boom, 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 boom. That's essentially what the heart is doing. And when it's doing it, well, we don't often notice it. The heart does this in the background without any symptoms. But when there is an additional area or site in the heart that becomes active, that can often take over. And by taking over, it starts producing these very, very fast impulses that trigger the heart to go very, very fast. And the beat becomes very intense, very fast. And there are many symptoms that you may get. It may be as simple as a sensation of the heart fluttering or racing, but it can cause chest discomfort. It can cause shortness of breath. It can also make you feel faint as if you're gonna pass out when the heart is doing this. It can drop blood pressure. So very important that you do seek medical care when you have an attack of this. And you might have been told that you have it, you might have a plan already or a strategy of what you may be able to do to reduce the duration of an attack. Now, what can trigger this off? Well, often there is a site that is underlying that, that you know, some individuals are more predisposed to having this condition or have this little collection of tissue or fibers that are becoming electrically active and can trigger off this condition. Stress, of course, physical stress, emotional stress can trigger it off. Stimulant medicines, drugs, illicit drugs, but even excess amounts of coffee, alcohol, tea, smoking. Uh, there might be other triggers such as an infection or a fever in the, in the body, and that can add more stress and can trigger off an attack of SVT. And there are some hormonal or thyroid or endocrine conditions, and of course, other any condition particularly affecting you know, other parts of the body, including the lungs, can add more stress and strain and then trigger off an episode. And the symptoms are very variable. I mean, some people may only have a very brief sensation and things settle down on their own. But there are others that have ongoing symptoms. And when the heart is doing this over a prolonged period of time, well, you can imagine it does cause a sensation of 
you know, being quite unwell, lightheaded, it can drop blood pressure. And of course, in those situations, we advise to call paramedics to get help, to go to the emergency department, to really urgently seek a, you know, medical care if things are not settling down. Now, your doctor may have prescribed or told you about some strategies that may help in some cases. You might have heard of one called the Valsalva maneuver. And when you're having this you know, SVT, when you are in this rhythm, then an action of blocking your nose by pinching the nose and then blowing, forcing against a blocked nose is if you're trying to clear or unblock your ears. For example, if we're flying and we're going up altitude and the ears become blocked, well, a simple pinch of the nose and then a strain down can sometimes actually revert the heart back to normal rhythm. Other situations of using ice and ice cold water and trying to drink a bit of that and seeing whether that has a bearing. But if things are not improving, then it's paramount that you do seek urgent care because there are some very good medicines that we can administer. But seeking care also allows us to undertake a cardiogram. And that gives us very precise information about the possible location and cause of this rhythm disturbance. But when you have this SVT, you may have been given a medicine, and there are various types of medicines that we can use that help control the heart rate and prevent an attack of this rhythm disturbance. Now, we have to weigh the risks and benefits of using medicines, of course, and we do see this condition in younger patients. So using medication long term may not be desirable. And in those situations, there are possible procedures that may be able to target where this little site of tissue is coming from and firing and zap it or burn it or ablate it to, to remove it. And these are invasive